all over the map for us. Yep, I've got a new fifth grader, seventh grader, and uh, sophomore in high school. So, um, you know, we do have sort of a combination because um, the two younger ones go to one school and the oldest one is in high school. So, um, like many high schools in our area, um, hers is virtual. This, uh, at least until November, until the first marking period is over, and then they're sort of going to reassess and see where where the virus is and how we are, I guess, uh, locally with social distancing and, and everything like that with the positivity rates of the virus, which is, is pretty serious stuff. The younger two are in a, uh, a newer school that's uh, larger, so they're able to um, physically distance the kids a little bit better. And, um, you know, they have to wear masks all day. So both, uh, all, all three of my children start next week, but um, there are uh, schools in the Chester County area, which is where we're based uh, here in Pennsylvania, that uh, started school already uh, today. Yeah, it's a big day. Here we are on August 24th, and it's the start of school for many schools today. So I hope that um, our book has been out for about a month. I hope many of the teachers that, that got it have a chance to learn from it. And we're going to see a lot of schools and teachers are, you know, using what they have and making do um, with what they have in order to go online. Tess, I know your son is a little younger, um, but things are different, right? They are. He's starting kindergarten this year, which we're very excited about, but it is going to be a fully virtual model until sometime in November when, as Julia mentioned, they're going to reconsider the options. And it's just crazy because they're supplying him with an iPad that he's going to be using for all of his schoolwork. So it's kind of a little, um, it's definitely going to be an adventure for us to, to see how it all works out. But well, we'll just like everybody else, we're doing what we can. Yeah, and there's a lot that, that that parents can do. I'm a parent of three children, and all of my kids are a little bit younger than kindergarten, so they're still in those preschool times, and it is challenging to get them to sit down for a full uh, lesson via Zoom. But hopefully some of the tips we're going to talk about today will aid in that. So let's jump in to our presentation. We have video presence for teachers, how to teach with a webcam, and again, I really, I wrote an entire book about this so we could really dig into it. We won't go into everything today, but you can do so much with a webcam. So get the free book. There's an online course that comes with it. It's just a couple hours long. You can take the online course. You can get it totally for free. Udemy gives me a coup unlimited coupon codes, but they only last for three days. So enroll today on Udemy. The coupon code is fall semester and it's udemy.com slash course slash technology dash four dash educators. So the big deal here is that video presence is, it, it, it basically means being present online, being present during a training session and a lesson. And that goes for educators and that goes for students, right? In order to have communications, we need the focus and attention of both sides of a two-way video communication. And studies show that up to 93% of all communications are nonverbal. So it's not so much what you're saying as much as the way that you say it, the way that you portray it, and some of these nonverbal communication skills that teachers know a lot about really include facial expressions, posture, physically moving, you know, moving your hands and movements, and then the tone in which you speak. And to prove this, Dr. Albert Mayabran, he's with UCLA Psychology, he did a study, and I just pulled this from his study, that uh, only 7% of the actual words that are being said actually get communicated. People spend more time looking at a person's face and listening to their actual voice, the way that they're saying things, more than the actual words. So that's how you get that 93% of communication is nonverbal. Right? So people are looking at your face, they're looking at your body, they're seeing the way in which you're communicating, and they're connecting with you. And uh, you know, there's a lot of studies, including Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point, about how important it is for students to truly connect with a teacher. They'll actually learn almost twice as much information from a teacher that they connect with. So using a webcam is obviously essential for those nonverbal communication skills. Now, a few of the ways that you can use a webcam go beyond just using it for a, a video conference call, 
right? You can actually use your webcam to create online videos, which you can upload to your learning management system and effectively flip the classroom. So that's what Technology Tools for Online Education, the book, is all about. And just a simple webcam, it's incredible what you can do by combining a little bit of know-how with some software like Open Broadcaster Software, which is totally free, Pixlr, which is a free cloud-based version of Photoshop, and just some really easy to use free tools. You'd be surprised how engaging and creative you can be creating online videos for education. Now, uh, we're not going to go into what the flipped classroom is and all the differences between asynchronous and, you know, synchronous learning, but you can use webcams for creating online videos, for hosting live online meetings, and then also having a virtual classroom, having those one-on-one -on -one sessions and those small groups and those classroom hours that students can, can really meet with you face-to-face. -face. Now, as you're using a webcam, it's only effective as, you know, the lighting that you have and the backgrounds that you're, you know, you're using. So try doing a test recording. So obviously the more light you have, generally the better you will look on camera. So put yourself in a well-lit area, but avoid putting yourself right in front of a, a really bright window, which would put a lot of backlight and kind of overexpose the camera. Uh, we will talk a little bit today about how to tweak your camera settings. Webcams generally are adjustable, and the Huddlecam HD Webcam 94 and the Huddlecam HD Pro that we'll show today are both quite adjustable to look really good and almost as good as a digital SLR camera. But when you're lighting and you're doing yourself, try doing a couple test recordings. Test record yourself in different areas and see where which space works best for you. Also consider your background. Virtual backgrounds are great. They're very flexible. It can turn any space into a new environment. Or think about maybe setting up a physical space where you can have an actual whiteboard behind you, where you can actually kind of interact with physical real items that are behind you because there is some value uh, to having a physical space. Now, you don't have to be on the webcam all the time. You can, of course, start sharing your screen. And you can see here at the bottom right, there's the little screen share button there. And I can actually just go ahead and share my screen. Um, so when you do that, you still remain present in the student's view. This is Zoom, but Google Meet and others are very similar. You can jump into screen sharing sessions and you, know, you can share document cameras and all kinds of great things and still remain present uh, in your webcams view. So that's nice. And of course, using a good webcam really makes all the difference because you are able to remain connected and look professional. Now there's two webcams that uh, Huddlecam HD offers and they're a little different. Uh, Huddlecam HD Pro, which I'll do a live demo of today, is a USB 3.0 camera. That's the latest version of you know, USB, or at least one of the latest versions. And it includes an IR remote control. So you can actually use this remote control to zoom it in and show things like a whiteboard that might be behind you. Um, Julia and I both have these webcams, so we can kind of show them off today. Um, but they're really, really great, and it, it's actually certified for Zoom. So that means all the advanced features like remote camera control and Zoom room integration all work with this camera. Now, the Huddlecam HD Webcam 94 is our value line camera. It has a wide 94-degree field of view, but it's just simple USB 2.0 plug and play. Now, it does come with some advanced exposure and settings so you can really set it up to look good. And we'll take a brief look at that today so that you can learn how to look good on your webcam. But the Huddlecam HD Pro, one of the big things that it has is what's called camera presets. And you can see in this GIF here that you could have a wide angle preset, a zoomed in preset, and then another zoomed in area where you can show charts, documents, and different things with what's almost like a pan tilt zoom camera with the ability to enhance the image significantly using a remote control. 
Now, uh, just a couple tips on getting comfortable on camera. Uh, recording a test video is obviously important. Practicing with family and friends. And being comfortable in a familiar space where you can really brand your virtual classroom experience. There's a whole chapter in Technology Tools for Online Education that's all about using the right colors and branding to make yourself look good. And I want to say hi to Cliff on LinkedIn who is watching. We are streaming live. I also want to say Hi to Kyle watching over on YouTube. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. Um, have a plan and have a mindset. And you know, comb your hair, dress for success, look good. Remember, it's not about you. It's about what you have to say. It is about the content. But keep in mind that your presence is the most important thing, right? Your body language, the way that you are saying it, not so much exactly what you are saying, is uh, what gets actually communicated. So familiarize yourself with the technology so that it doesn't get in the way during your presentation. Now, this is an example I like to use quite frequently. It's really simple. If you do have a monitor in addition to your laptop, you can put the webcam on top of your laptop, as you can see here, and then just lift the monitor up behind it so that you can remain having a eye-to-eye -eye connection with the camera, but still see all of your students in the Zoom grid view. So you can look down to look at your work and look up to see the students, but generally you always look as though you are looking directly into the camera. So really nice diagram there from X Keys. Now to look good on camera, obviously think about your background, make it fun, make it colorful. Colors are great ways to inject emotion and good feeling around what you're teaching. It could be done virtually or, or for real. A green screen generally will make your virtual backgrounds look better. But again, that is something that you need to purchase and you need to have some decent lighting for it to work. Real backgrounds are ideal because you can you know, put things inside of them. You could have things that come to life and come closer to the camera. A favorite light that I believe Julia has one of these, and, and we use a couple of them as well, is called the Loom Cube. It's a really affordable okay. option. Um, you have one of those, right, Julia? I do. I, in fact, I was going to um, try to show you um, if I can find my other camera here. I don't know that I have it plugged in, but I was going to show you uh, what the Loom Cube looks like. It's so easy. I just clip it onto the back of uh, it's on right now, but so I'll turn it off. It's a little bright, but. I just kind of clip it onto the back of my monitor and there you go. It's cool. really small, very easy and um, puts out a lot of light. You can see the difference between it not lit and it being lit. See, big mm -hmm. difference. So really wow. easy solution. And I think it was $50, $80 maybe. Yeah, it's, it's a great solution to add a little light, especially if you're having any issues with people seeing you. Um, it'll, it'll really help. Um, now, uh, when it comes to webcams, they do have settings inside of them. And I didn't want to dig into the weeds with all of this today. I wanted to get to questions and have a conversation about what's going on today. But you do have options for brightness and contrast and hue, for example. And uh, I have a couple webcams here right in front of me. This is the HuddleCam HD Pro. And then next to me, I have the HuddleCam webcam 94. So I just want to show those to you really quickly. So here I am. And this one obviously gives me the ability to zoom in. So it's very nice for cropping it and making it look good. Um, and having the ability, like for example, I'll set a preset here of preset one. And you can see just how really like good it looks compared to a regular webcam. And preset two here. Now when I hit these, I can go directly to different spots in my space. So if I have like my whiteboard, for example, I can literally have a, uh, a shot where it goes right to the webcam. And when I go over there, sorry, it goes right to the webcam, right to the whiteboard. So it's much easier. So if I hit preset three here, when I'm presenting and trying to show something on the whiteboard, students can get a much better view of what I'm going over here. So just, I'm just going to put test here. Um, so you can see that now if I'm if I'm on preset one, or sorry, I guess that would be preset two, that's a little hard to see. But on preset th uh, three, it's much easier and you can zoom in up to 8x. So a really great way to show whiteboards and different things in a much higher quality uh, than you would normally with 
um, a regular webcam. Now, the Huddlecam HD94, this webcam does not have any zoom at all. Um, it is a fixed webcam, like most webcams, but you can see it does have a wide angle view, so you can see it here, but um, it's not quite as good as the Huddlecam HD um, Pro in OBS, and this is available in many different uh, programs, including Zoom, but you can open up all of these abilities to adjust them. I was tweaking this before the show, obviously, but just getting the brightness just right and the contrast just right, for example, is a feature of this webcam that really makes it look good. So I'm not gonna go into the weeds with all of that. It's all obviously explained uh, in the cameras. So uh, a couple other great things that you can do if you'd like is you can use a software like OBS, which we cover in the book, to uh, send video directly to Zoom. So you can have overlays and lower thirds and additional graphics, even play video clips directly into OBS. And then if you are a Zoom user, just a quick tip, you can enable HD mode, you can touch up your appearance, and you can even play around with the new backgrounds and filter options, which are really great for you know enhancing your day and making it fun. So that's our presentation for today. Um, I wanted to throw it over to Tess and Julia here to see um, if there were some final thoughts before we, we close. Yeah, I think you made a great um, point, Paul, about the features of Zoom too. Um, everyone should familiarize themselves with that if they're using Zoom. You know, go uh, next to your the video camera icon, click on video settings and make sure you're enabling HD. So you want to enable the full HD and then toggle down to um, where you can touch up my appearance. And, you know, everyone, whether you're a male or a female, everyone seems to like that feature a lot because, you know, it just kind of uh, it's, it's almost like the filters that um, you hear about a lot of people using on on apps like Snapchat. It's almost like a filter for your, your Zoom video. Yes, and it, it's been very popular. And, uh, you know, teachers just, it's easy enough to get to. And I understand not wanting to do anything other than Zoom. But I will say that, you know, Julia, you and I have talked about this. And something that I think a lot of educators are realizing is that Zoom is just one tool in the quiver of arrows that they have available to use. Uh, obviously, uh, it's a lot to learn all at once. Hopefully, you know, the, the spring 2020 was the kind of crash course. And in the fall here, we can apply some of the learning, but learning about learning management systems, how to create videos themselves that can be used to flip the classroom so that students can watch the lectures, you know, at their own pace at home. And then when they come to these Zoom sessions and the live video calls, they come more prepared and ready to collaborate on the, um, the topic at hand. So there's a lot of tools. Zoom is a great one. And there's a few more that we recommend and review in technology tools for online education, including obviously the webcam, which I think is an essential one. So with that, we will close. Thank you for watching this Huddlecam HD live broadcast today. We're excited to have you as a viewer. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we've got lots of great more videos coming up soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. See you, Tess. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah.